It's a dispute that's pitted Beacon Hill residents against the city, with disability advocates caught in the middle. Both sides say they want to make sidewalks in the historic neighborhood more accessible to the disabled. But how exactly to do that is now the subject of a lawsuit accusing the city of acting in bad faith. Even for the most able-bodied, Beacon Hill is not easy to maneuver. Between the uneven sidewalks and narrow streets, not to mention masses of people, cars, trolleys and bikes, it's a wonder more people aren't injured there. Now, though, the city is really fouling up the streets, this time, though, to install improved ramps for handicapped access, a move applauded by Christine Griffin of the Disability Law Center. The material has to be something that's going to last, something that's going to be accessible, something that isn't going to deteriorate quickly over time with the winters and the summers. And it has to also have uh, detectable warning strips on it that someone with low vision can actually see. A lot of times someone with a cane, the detectable warning will let them notice that it's there. But some people that just have low vision, they don't see that transition. They're more prone to fall. But it's the material that's at issue. The Beacon Hill Civic Association has sued the city of Boston over what it says are materials out of character with the historic cobblestone and brick of Beacon Hill. It's an argument Griffin isn't buying. People really have to determine, you know, what's more important to them? You know, is access more important for all people, for everyone to have access to all parts of the city, or is it just the look of it? What's more important? And that's the question that needs to be answered. Apparently, the city already has. Workers are now digging up curbs on Beacon Street, preparing to put the new ramps in soon. All right, well, what's the balance between accessibility and historic preservation? Joining me now is Kita Gilmore, chair of the Beacon Hill Civic Association, which has filed the suit against the city of Boston. Welcome, Kita. Thank you. So Beacon Hill has been the subject of a fair amount of ridicule from columnists and other people over this issue. It, it, explain from your point of view what it's really about. It's not the fact that you don't want the ramps. You want them to be historically accurate to the yes, neighborhood. Absolutely. Um, we support accessibility and we want all of Beacon Hill to be accessible um, to everyone and everyone to come and enjoy um, the little slice of history that is Beacon Hill. Um, the issue is really the materials that the ramps are made out of. We want them to be 100% ADA compliant. Um, but it, there are other materials other than poured concrete mm -hmm. and uh, plastic. Yeah, okay, so we have an, a, an example of what they're proposing for Beacon Hill, and it's, it looks like a little uh, concrete ramp, and then mm -hmm. that strip there, they were gonna make that bright yellow, and they did right. compromise to make that red, mm -hmm. sort of a brickish yes. red. What's wrong with the poured concrete? Um, the poured concrete just um, doesn't fit in with the historic character. The um, Beacon Hill Architectural Commission has said that poured concrete and the plastic pad um, materials are not appropriate for a historic district. And these plastic things haven't lasted anyway. No, in other parts them? of the city, when they've put them down, they've already had to replace them. They came up with, with the first snowfall, you know, yeah. ripped, just yeah. ripped them right up. What would the Architectural Commission like? Um, you know, we'd like to actually just get to the table and discuss materials, but what's been done in other parts of the city and in other cities with historic districts are a wire cut brick for the ramps, which are ADA compliant. And then for the pad, you could use a cast concrete, which is much more durable and actually a third the cost of the plastic pads. Okay, so they've already started this work. We saw them doing it yesterday. Yeah. It was nice weather and they were going at it. So, I mean, is it too late to, to change the design? You know, we're still hoping to come to the table. That's one thing we just, um, that's what we'd like to do. We have a, um, a new administration and who inherited this problem. We've been trying to work on this for a couple of years. Yeah, why is it taking so long? I mean, you know, what's the issue? What's, why, why can't reasonable people decide? I mean, if everybody agrees you need to have these ramps, what, why, why is the city kind of bulldozing its way through this now? Well, the issue of materials has never been on the table in any discussion I've ever been a part of and for two years. And they keep bringing the same proposal to the Architectural Commission. And they denied it the first time, uh, denied without prejudice, and said, you know, bring back a design that has different materials. Mm. And they brought the same design back. And so uh, we've never been able to sit down and talk about um, 
you mm -hmm. know, pluses and minuses, pros and cons. Is this a money issue? Is one design more expensive than the other? And I know there is federal money involved in this too, because it's the Americans with Disabilities Act. Yeah. And so I, I assume they're paying for the, essentially yeah. the whole thing. I, you know, I'm not an expert on the price of um, the brick, and I'm sure a lot of that depends on the labor in um, laying bricks and how you would um, uh, maintain them. But I do know on the, the pad, the cost of the cast concrete is about a third the cost of, of the plastic. Um, I, I've been told actually in our walk arounds with the cities, um, um, people including their engineer that, you know, when you look at the whole cost of the project, the cost would, the extra cost would be minimal mm -hmm. for a wire I mean, Are you concerned at all that this is kind of the camel's nose under the tent because Beacon Hill isn't accessible, as I said earlier, to, to most people in some ways. I mean, we were just walking up the hill. And, you know, if you've got a sprained ankle or you're on crutches or something, yeah. it's really tough. And there's a lot of the homes are built on very steep steps. I mean, are they going to start making those? You know, are going to put ramps on all the steps? I mean, what's next? Well, you know, that's what we'd like to actually sit down at the table and have really a more comprehensive plan. Beacon Hill isn't, it is a hill, mm -hmm. and it has very narrow sidewalks. We have gas lamps and trees and, and tree pits that are um, um, impeding the way. And so <laughs> yes. we need to look at it street by street and really yeah. have a plan. Um, there's all sorts of ideas out there. The city actually has a plan on Joy Street. They ha it's a separate federal project where they're doing what's called a shared street and where they bring the level of the street, the asphalt on the street, up to the level of the oh, curb. Yeah. And so you could maneuver without disturbing, mm -hmm. you know, the aesthetics of the sidewalk, the narrow sidewalk, and you share the street. So the cars, pedestrians, hmm. uh, disabled, everybody would share the street. And, you know, on Beacon Hill, that's kind of what we do anyway. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> we walk in the street and, you know. Everybody does, I know, you have to. <laughs> and, you know, I think it, it makes it more of a neighborhood. Yeah. We sit and talk in the yeah. street and, and. So are, do you feel, you know, kind of put upon by some of the media coverage, which has, you know, well, made fun of you guys to, to, to an extent? You know, what I really hate is that it's made two sides to yeah. the story. And really, we're, we should all be on the same side. We all want accessibility. Um, I, th I think there's several ways to get there. And um, I just hate pitting one side against mm -hmm. the other. All right. Gita Gilmore, thank you so much. Thank Gita. you.